I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. We're covering different chess tactics. Those are uh, ways to attack the opposing position. Tonight we're gonna go different ways to attack the opposing king. Now this first example, we're gonna go through a couple examples on the dangers of castling on the queen side. You know, the standard is to castle on the king side. It's generally considered safer. Number one, after you move your king two squares to the right, you're on the king knight one square behind the three pawns. When you castle queen side, you're not on queen knight one, you're on queen bishop one, and the king is not behind the th directly behind the three pawns. He's not protecting the queen rook pawn. So when you castle queen side, it's very common for the person who castles queen side to make another move with the king to move over one square to the left to be on the knight, queen knight square. That's the safest position. So now we're going to look at some examples where castling queen side will show you some of the drawbacks that can happen. So this first position, it's white to play and win. Now, to analyze any position, first, um, let's look at the pawn position, which is quite simple. There's three pawns on the queen side for both white and black, and three pawns on the king side, and they're on their original squares. So that means they're not in contact with each other with pieces. There are no pawn moves to consider for the most part. Once we look at the pawns, now it's good to look at the minor pieces. Let's look at white's minor pieces. White has two bishops, one on e3 and one on e2. When the bishops are side by side, they're very effective with each other. The white squared bishop covers the diagonals on the white squares and the black bishop covers the adjacent black diagonals. Now if we look at the bishops, you'll see right off the bat that the white squared bishop is aiming toward the queen side and can hit the square b5 and a6. Now a6 is defended by a pawn, but it's good to know. And the, the uh, white squared bishop for white can move to f3 and attack the b7 square could move to g4 and pin the knight on d7. So you just kind of look at the possible moves to, th these are the possibilities white has to deal with. Now let's look at the black squared bishop on e3 for white. Notice that it is aiming at that pawn on a7, and remember I said when you cast the queen side, that pawn's not defended. So it looks like white might be able just to snap that pawn off. But as you know, anytime you take a rook pawn, your opponent might block your bishop from retreating by moving the pawn up to b6. So you have to consider that possibility. So much for the bishops. <laughs> Looking at the rooks, the white rook on h1 is behind a pawn and not doing anything, so we can disregard that rook for the time being. Now the rook on d1 is on an open file attacking the knight on d7, and if the knight moves, the rook will attack the other rook on d8. And notice that the rook keeps the black king stuck on the queen side. The black king can't run to the king side because the rook cuts it off. Also, you should notice that if the knight on d7 moves and black trades the rooks, it doesn't buy black anything because white just takes back with his inactive rook on h1 and replaces the d1 rook. Now, the next thing you want to do is look at the other side and see what moves uh, black has. We already said there are no good black pawn moves. Let's look at the knights. Black's knights are on the, the black second row. That's very passive. 
Uh, the one uh, knight move that might make sense if black had the time would be to play that knight on e7 to f5, where he would attack the queen and the bishop. He could at least trade off one of the bishops, and that would probably secure his king side, because white needs those two bishops to have a successful attack. So if it was black's move, there's no doubt he should play knight to f5 and try to safeguard his position by trading off a minor piece. The also, the queen, the black queen, is blocked by the knight on e7, all the more reason to move it to f5 to open up the diagonal for the queen. And notice that the queen blocks that rook on h8, keeps it from coming to the middle of the board. All in all, white has a strong position, and in this case, a winning position. So given all those factors we talked about, who would like to propose a winning move for white? Bishop yes, bishop takes a7. In this particular case, trying to block the bishop from retreating doesn't work very well. This is pretty simple. Black tries to block the bishop, but it opens up the diagonal for the white bishop and it's an immediate checkmate. Bishop to a6 is checkmate. Okay, let's go on to the next example. Okay, this is uh, similar to the previous position. The uh, white's black squared bishop in our prior example was on e3 attacking the pawn in a7. Now it's on f4, and you'll notice right away that black can't move his king because the bishop guards all the black squares. That's very dangerous for black to have a king immobilized like that. The white bishop on e2, similar to the last example, is aiming to the a6 square where at some point the bishop could move there, and if the bishop moved there right away, you would see it would be attacking the pawn on b7, and if pawn takes bishop, it would leave the c6 pawn unprotected. Queen takes pawn check, oh, that would be mate, checkmate, wouldn't it? So we'd have to say bishop to a6 is a possibility, wouldn't we? Well, it turns out black's position is dire and white can win within a couple moves. There's actually a stronger move than bishop to a6, though, so that's called a red herring. and I threw it out there. It's not the right move. Anyone see the winning move for white? Queen takes yes, queen takes check. The only way to stop checkmate is to take the queen and it opens up that diagonal and Bishop to a6 is checkmate, similar to the checkmate we looked at in the prior example. So you can see from here that sometimes castling queenside is dangerous. But we also must take into consideration that in both examples, black's knights were not properly posted. If the black knight in this example was on c6, and the pawn was back on c7, the pawn would block the black, the white bishop on f4, the black squared bishop from, and the king could move to b8. The pawn on b7 would protect the knight, and the knight would protect the pawn. It would be much stronger. So it was kind of a setup for the author made black's position particularly bad. And in your own games, it probably wouldn't be so dire if you castle a queen side. All right, well, that's that topic. Okay, here's another, here's another attacking concept. I think there's only one example, so we'll do this. We'll get the easy ones out of the way first. The topic is how two bishops can attack a castled position. So let's look at that example. Well, since I just said the two bishops are attacking, welcome. 
We're going over chess tactics and how uh, one side can attack the king on the other side. So these are little examples. The, the examples typically last five to, to eight moves. And the topic of this example is two bishops can attack the opposing king side. Now if you look at this position, you can see that the only side with two bishops is white. So it's white to play and win. And notice how the queen and bishop were on the same, the bishop on b2, the queen on c3, they're on the same diagonal, and they're aiming toward the black king. Now there is a pawn on g7 and a rook on f6, but the queen and bishop are attacking along that line. Now, when the queen and bishop are lined up like that, Anyone know what the chess term is? Uh, what, what is it? A battery. A battery, yes. So that is a battery. It's a very strong attacking formation for white. Now, it's not just the queen and, and the <laughs> bishop on b2, but there's a strong bishop on c4 attacking that white diagonal toward the king. And look, that diagonal is open and the king is wedged in the corner without being able to move. Um, does it start off with rook e8? Well, that's definitely a possibility. Uh, I went through the example earlier, but I don't remember the exact move. So we'll take rook to e8 under advisement. Let's say, let's start with that. Rook to e8, threatening rook takes queen, your only move is what for black? And then what's your follow-up? And, um, and then your queen takes the rook on f6. And if the pawn takes, <laughs> then you take with the bishop checkmate. that's right. Let's find a better move than pawn takes queen if we can. What do you do if I move my queen? Let's see. I can't go to f8. Yeah. I could go to e7. It's protected by the knight. What do you do then? I move the queen to e7 to guard the g7 square and prevent checkmate. What, what do you do then as uh, white? What's that? Well, the, the line we're looking at is rook to e8, yep. queen takes rook, white does queen takes rook. Now we're moving the queen up one square to e7, and what's the winning move now for white? Oh, okay. Well, let's stick with this until we get to the end. Well... The queen temporarily stops checkmate, right? Mm -hmm. But there's nothing blocking our pawn on f5, is there? Our own queen. But we can swap off the black queen. He has, black has to retreat the knight to a square where the knight is undefended. And we freed up our pawn on f5. That's, and we still have the bishop on that key line with the king. So the suggested move after queen takes queen, knight takes queen is what? Then you could push your pawn. To f6. And, then the pawn. and threaten two things. Pawn takes knight and pawn takes pawn, which happens to be checkmate. checkmate yeah. And if black does pawn takes pawn, you, you have, and that's yeah. checkmate too. Yeah. So I don't see an answer to that. Let's see if that, I think that's the right solution. So let's see. Yes, you're right. Very good. Queen takes. Queen takes. Queen here. Oh! I think this is a case where white can win two different ways. Pawn up definitely wins. This is an alternative win. The knight is unprotected. It can't move because that would let the rook go to the eighth rank with check, with check. 
Now, if the knight moved to the eighth rank, the rook would go there, threaten rook takes knight checkmate because the bishop attacks the knight, and black can't move his, white, his bishop out of the way because it would give up the rook. So that's what happens, and there's no defense. But pawn up, uh, the, I know the author said that would win too. Okay, now we're going to have fun with this topic. There's a few more examples. Smothered mate. Four examples. Smothered mate is one of my favorite ways to checkmate. You wedge the king into the corner and you lay checkmate with the knight. So that's the idea. This is very simple, so why don't you tell us what the right move is? Yes. White to play and get smothered made in a few moves. Oh, um, queen c4 check. Okay, king there. And now what? Uh, oh, then you do, um, think you do like. Can the knight check the king? The knight all right, let's look at that. The king has to move over. Now you can double check the king. Yeah, uh, knight H. Six. Check. Now, if he goes to F8, queen to F7 is yeah, checkmate. checkmate. That isn't a smothered Here we go. Now Three, what? Queen G. Eight. Check. And the rook takes, and wedging the king in the corner, and, and we get our smothered mate. Very good. Let's look at the next example. Okay, there's not an immediate smothered mate here. It takes a few moves to get to it. There is a winning move though. Who would like to suggest the winning move for white? Knight. Right, check. At a minimum, right off the bat, we can win the rook for a knight, right? And then we will attack the queen. So the only way to, he needs to move, move the king up to d7. So the other rook, when I do, when white does knight takes rook check, he wants to be able to take back with the rook. And he loses a rook for a knight, but he doesn't lose the queen. So he does that. There's a stronger <coughs> move than knight takes rook check. What's the right move for white? Knight takes what? Of the bishops on uh, c5, yes. The pawn's pin, so it doesn't protect the bishop. Now the king has to move. Now if the king moved back to d8, we just drop our knight back in, get the fork, and take the rook, and we would have won a piece and a rook. Queen e6 check? Yeah, queen e6 check. Now I'll, the king moves over, what do we do now? D7, and he can't do knight takes because it would leave the queen hanging. Oh, yeah, and then, then he moves the king, king over. Knight yeah. yeah. Oh, well, first we take this knight. This is kind of cute. There's no rush to get our smothered mate. We need to take that knight because we're going to do smothered mate with knight to D7 check, see? So that's why we take the knight first. The king moves over. We drop the knight back. Now we can do B6, double check, and we have our smothered mate set up. Rook takes. Yeah, that's nice. I'd like to play that against somebody. Okay. Obviously, white has the attacking chances. Okay, you're right. King back, now what? Um, queen B5. B3, D5, the knight could take it. B3 check works though. And then you can check using the knight. Now he could give it up, but we take, we win a rook and we threaten queen to f8 mate. And he can't move the bishop out of the way. He can't really defend the mate. 
So he moves his king over, setting up our smothered mate. Okay. Let's see what this one looks. This one's a little trickier. You're gonna have to work harder. Hold on a second. I gotta get rid of rid of that notation. Okay. I hope you didn't see it. What's the winning move for white? You did see it. Yeah. Did you see the follow up? No, I didn't see it. What's the follow up move? Knight g6, I just do pawn takes knight. Yeah. Well, we have a half hour. Bishop g6. Bishop where? G6. Yes, bishop g6. Pawn takes, knight takes, pawn check, wins the queen. So... Now the threat is, what's the white's threat now if, if white could make two moves in a row? Knight. knight takes pawn check isn't really a threat. Rook takes knight, bishop takes, queen takes. We'd get two pieces for a pawn and rook. It yeah. would be an even trade and white's attack would be over. Yeah. What's the real threat for white? Well, how about bishop takes knight, number one, winning a piece. Okay. Number two, well, anyway, that's number one. So black retreats the knight. He can't protect it, can he? Not well, anyway. He could move his queen up, but that would leave the f7 pawn unprotected and allow knight or bishop takes pawn. So he retreats. Now what's the winning move for white? Bishop takes pawn, very good. He can't do rook takes because we get the knight fork on the queen and king. So he moves the queen out, now what do we do? King up, now what? How about knight takes f8, double check. Forcing the king back, now what do we do? Queen h7, knight yeah. takes queen. And then knight does g6. And what's that? Checkmate. Checkmate. That was fun. That was the end of my our smothered mate examples, but I enjoy that. <coughs> okay, we have mate on the back rank. Mate on the back rank. There's a lot of these, so I saved it for last. There's about 14 examples. We may not get through them all, but some of them are very simple. So, I mean, exceedingly simple. So we'll go through them real quick. Uh, white to play and win. Yes. All right. That's the basic idea. That's, the author knows it's simple. He just wanted to lay out the idea of an improperly defended back rank by black. Yeah, and black can also back rank an extra belt. Right. So let's go on to the, the next example, pretty simple too. Well, no, this one's a little harder. What's the winning move for white? There's no sacrifice or beautiful win, but there is a very strong move, attacking move for white. What, what would, could that be? F4? Not f4. Isn't rook takes f6? You mean e6? Uh, yeah. Well, just rook takes back, and yeah. then what do you do? Notice that Black is defending. His pawns are on white squares, right? We have both of the white rooks attacking the pawn. How can we attack that pawn on d5? Oh, c4. C4, that's the key move. Now, 
Now what's the follow-up move? Wait, is it now? Is it rook Let's look at it. Yeah. Notice the D file is open for the queen, so the queen can go to D8 at some point. Um, rook takes rook, rook takes rook. How about queen first? Now what does black do? Well, it bends it to rook e. With the rook or the queen? Now what's the winning move? Queen. queen takes queen. Bingo. <laughs> so that was a little harder. Let's go to the next guy. Okay. So we see white is attacking. The queen and bishop are attacking the knight on c6. It looks like the knight is adequately defended by the other knight on e7 and the queen on d5. Wait, 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 wait. Notice that the queen on d5 and the rook on d8 are open on an open file that we can attack with our, one of our rooks, driving the queen away. The queen can't take it because that's defended by the rook and queen. What's the winning move? Bishop takes here. You guys have created a variation that the author didn't have. Let's see if black has a defense. What could black do? Well, let's try the knight. Now what does white do? Which rook? F. Okay. Now, where can we move the queen, if anywhere? Or are there any other moves? Well, I don't want to leave the queen there. Rook takes queen, rook takes rook, and I lost my queen. Hey, how about this? The queen protects the rook, and... Oh, it takes the queen. Yeah, 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 then what? Not the rook oh. Yeah. If they use and this doesn't work either, yeah. does it? And if they take, then you can just be checking the queen. Very good. All right, all right. So that didn't work. I wonder if there's anything else I can do. No, there, I don't think there is. Black queen don't want to go to yes, I think. Let me think about this. E6? Okay. Let's try that. Anybody see a good move for white? Queen takes C6. Queen takes C6? Okay. Now what happens? Well, what, what do you think? Rook takes d1. Rook takes, now what? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, now what? <laughs> yeah. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. So, here, we went, he no, we tried queen e6. Let's do that again. Now, what did we do? Oh, we did queen takes. Let's look at that. Now, pawn takes didn't work. Rook takes rook didn't work, and pawn takes rook didn't work, and obviously queen takes doesn't work. Is there any other move? How about bishop up here? Does that do anything? He... <sighs> What does a white do? Then you could just take the queen. Oh, you could take the bishop, couldn't you? Yeah. No, but then the queen would. Oh, you take with the queen, right? You take with the queen. No, that won't work. I got two pieces on the queen. Looks to me like bishop to d7 saves black. Let's go back. 
Let's see what the author says. First move is the rook move. Now the queen here. Now we take, take, oh, queen takes, but, oh, the, okay, so this is it, but we, we need to, we need to find a solution to bishop here, don't we? Oh, I know what we do. We don't do anything f fancy. How, how about queen takes pawn? <laughs> now we have a pawn advantage, and we have the two rooks attacking. This would probably win the game. It, it's not showy, but it would probably win. Is there, is there a better move for white than queen takes pawn? I don't see one. So I think queen takes pawn wins. What do you think? Yeah, and the bishop on d7 blocks the rook on d8, so that's not good for black either. The only chance black, oh, and notice, oh, we forgot, white's a piece up. So he, black staved off checkmate, but he's a pawn and a piece down, so he's lost anyway. All right, let's go to the next one. This is easy. Oh, this is not a win. This is an example that's not a win. Yes, that's the defense. Actually, this is an even position. There's no way for white to win the game. The author just throws it in there to caution you that sometimes there's a defense by the one rook retreating and defends the other rook. So it's, it's, it's not much of an example, but. Okay, what do we have here? It looks to me that black has the attacking chance here. He has the two rooks on the D file White's rook on h4 is not supported by anything, and the bishop on f4 is not doing anything. Well, the only thing it does, it keeps from rook to d2. That's white, right? It's black to move and win. What's black's winning move? What is the white queen defending? There's two threats the white queen is defending. What are they? Um, the pawn on f7. No, the white queen is on e2. What's it defending from e2? It's the preventing rook to d1 check. That's one. What else is it defending? Um, f2. 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 What else? b2. Can the queen... Defend b2 and d1 at the same time. It's an overworked queen. You've heard that oh, phrase. Queen takes, I mean, queen takes b2 and yes, queen takes b2, drawing the queen away from the d1 square. Bingo. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Let's see what we have next. Let's see. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. Bishop h6. What does uh, queen takes? Now what? Then you do queen takes on e5. And then what? And Let's then see. Pawn oh, pawn takes its checkmate. Yeah. Rook takes rook, and that's the end of it. Okay, well, you got that down. No, it's white. It's probably white. Okay, what's white's move then? Let me see what the first move is. Queen. Knight takes pawn. It is black to win. And then pawn takes. And then rook would come down to e1 yeah. check, forking and winning the queen. So then. Oh wait, look. We don't. We have a a a, a great move for white. What does black do now? Immediately, rook takes f1. What? 
What? Take the queen? No, no. Checkmate. Wait. T oh, there's checkmate. No, it has to be forced. So, what's the right move for black? There is no right move. White wins. Yeah. Black had a stunning defense. White had a stunning defense blocking the checkmate with the bishop and threatening his own checkmate. Black had abandoned his back row when he did rook to e1 check. Well, rook to e8, white has an extra piece, right? And he has rook takes g7 pawn with a strong attack. Yeah, yeah, I, I forgot about that too. Wait a minute. There is no win in this position. It depends on black making a bad move. I have to make a bad move. This is an even position. In fact, black has a slight advantage. Why does black have a slight advantage? The pawns and pieces are all offsetting oh, each yeah, other. Exactly. White's pawn position is worse. That gives black a slight advantage. But the author has black make a bad move, and then you can figure out the win. Knight here. Now, actually, black can still get a draw. He lost his advantage with this move. What does white do? What's white's move? Yeah? Oh, go ahead. What is it? D8, you mean? Well, then uh, black could do queen takes back and threaten queen takes queen. And the rook would continue to protect the... Oh, that would leave the bishop. You're right. You're right. Okay. Okay. No, if rook takes rook on d8, notice black can do knight takes bishop check, gaining a move, and then he can take back and... White doesn't have a threat of bishop takes bishop any longer. So what's the move for white? I think we need to gain a temple. How can white gain a temple? White ha bishop is attacked. He has to either move the bishop or take something with the bishop. That's the right move. Bishop takes. Wait, wait, wait. Let's not jump to conclusions. There is a good a defense here that works for black. What is the right defense for black? Oh, you knight the rook first. Knight rook takes three. No. Oh, knight to f3 doesn't work because the bishop can come back and take the knight. Rook takes d1. No. See, the problem with queen takes bishop, we leave our rook underprotected, and white just does rook takes rook. And if rook takes rook, we have queen takes rook checkmate. Yeah, that's why you think queen takes their rook. Can we block that white diagonal with somehow? Yeah, knight c6. Can't we block the white queen diagonal with something besides a knight? The white queen diagonal from g5 to d8, how can we block that diagonal with a move? How about moving our pawn up one square? The, defense, the correct defense is moving the pawn up. We gain a temple by attacking the queen. And the queen moves, we take the bishop, and the queen is no longer on the rook, you see? There's only a white rook on a black rook, and the black rook's defended by the other rook. And bishop to d5 check doesn't do anything because we do rook takes bishop, threatening pawn takes queen. This is a, this would, black could still get an even game if he played this. Instead, he did rook takes, queen takes, and oh, that's, that's pretty. Rather than rook down, even stronger is queen takes knight. Rook takes right, right, okay. Now all these that we've been going through are by Sigbert Teresh who wrote the, the game of chess book. That's what we've been going over. Now we're gonna go through a chess problem written by an Italian game named Stoshi 
way back in 1962. He got a lot of prizes for his problems. Checkmate in two moves, how hard can that be? White to move. You find the key move for white and everything black tries, there's a checkmate. So white to move, checkmate in two moves. Now, let's analyze just a little bit. Where? Okay, let's look at it. Here and here. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that would be checkmate, wouldn't it? Wait a second. Oh, let's, yeah, let's block the check. Now, where's the a checkmate? Want to go back? Yeah. Okay, try another move. What is it? Rook to d4. Let's look at it. Rook here, check. Okay, now, how about if we move the king and attack the rook here? What do you do? What's your checkmate move? Well, why don't you go to c3 so the bishop can't check you again? Well, the bishop could check me on d2. If the bishop checks me, I'll do king takes rook, right? Yeah. So you, white only has one move to checkmate. Does anyone see a checkmate? I don't. I don't. Let's go back. Try something else. Now, let me give you a clue on problems. The first move is usually not a check. That's too obvious. So don't look for, look for some move that threatens checkmate but doesn't involve the first move being a check. Queen, queen, C6. I think that's it. So the first would queen C6. Okay, now the, the king is pretty much trapped. He can only go to A3 or A5. Let's go to A3. What's the checkmate move? Yeah. Here. Rook here? Yeah, wouldn't that be Rook here? I, don't know. I could go no. I could go back here, right? Yeah, Oh, bishop here? That looks like that works. Wait a minute. Oh, bishop to Wait a second. Queen here. Oh, we said king. I have to move my king. Yeah, you said bishop there. That's the checkmate. That's pretty. What's the checkmate here? One move, checkmate. Does moving that pawn up really change anything? Not really. So what's the right Bishop move? Bishop to D2. Bishop to D2 and yeah, the pawn move really didn't change anything. That's great. checkmate. Okay, good. We have one more. We have one minute left. Okay, white to move and checkmate. This will be our last example. Two moves. What's the right move for white? Queen C3. Where? Queen C3. Or you can take the free pawn on this too. This pawn? Okay. And you're threatening queen to E2 checkmate. I'm going to advance here and take a knight. What's the m winning move? Um, oh, I guard the checkmate square e2 with my knight. Rook, F, I mean, yeah, rook, F, uh, one. rook F1. Wait a minute. I can go to, yeah, I heard d2. That's the winning move. Checkmate. So whoever found rook takes pawn, that is definitely the right move. Let's go back a little bit. 
So now, oh, and if queen, if I get a queen, what's the checkmate? Oh, then you can just queen your Rihanna. Yeah, queen. that's it. So that was pretty, pretty straightforward. You did a good job in finding it. That'll cover it for tonight. Thanks for coming. Yeah.